right. All right, guys. Uh, so, what do we have here? We got the Tron Dynamic. So, we'll see what it looks like. There is no box yet. This is a green. Looks like the customs went through and caught this and they were checking it out because it had a, had a label there that says that they checked it. But apparently, there you go. They went through the hole. Oh, well, there you go. So, oh. all right. So this is obviously the final thing. Let's see the frames. Okay. And that will be another set of frames. signs they have you know all these angles I love that stuff you know? oh, there you go. That's it. so let's see so what we have so we have the frames so it has okay so they have the inner frames and the outer frames I don't know if you know this but uh, the trons they have these large holes because they have uh, sacrificial uh, spacers between the two the two frames, they're plastic and they can break and you simply just, total break in the frames, breaks uh, all these plastics and you can just replace it and makes it easy. So here's the, uh, the kit and this is the boom, pretty long. Oh yeah, this is a 700 class size. Yeah, I forgot about that. Let me get some scissors. I can open this. Okay. All right. The the company Tron um, uh, it started with the guy's uh, dad. Uh, and it was an extrusion company for extruding aluminum, so that's why they can make all this special shape, special shaped um, booms and stuff like that. So it's easy for because they have an extrusion aluminum extrusion line in their factory apparently. So that's the uh, ah, this is the battery tray, all right. Okay, let's see the actual, the actual stuff inside. All right, so we have straps. And this is the frame. I'm sorry, the, the main gear. And the, by the way, they come built from the factory. So that the way they know that they actually tend to complete the kit. But you have to... Uh, unscrew them and re just, just simply unscrew them and screw them back with the with the blue Loctite. Okay, so that's, but at least you know how it, how it's built. And um, so it has this sprag in there already in place. You know, very nice. Okay, so we get in here. We have the main gear. Okay. These are the nine-inch sets. Alrighty, they're so strong. They can handle a lot of abuse, you know. They're good. They're good. What else? Uh, 
Oh, this is the tail fin. And yeah, and the plates where the uh, the flavorless unit and uh, and the and the other I don't know which one is that probably the second plate. They have two plates. So another thing that's interesting in the in the Tron stuff is that they have the 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 flavorless uh, unit is mounted um, with. Uh, uh, rubber dampers and they are adjustable so you can adjust how hard you want it you want the dampers to to do uh, okay so we have the um fast plate okay so the fast plate is also here uh right these are yeah these are uh, larger it's the same. I think it's the same as the as the 5.8 uh, Heritage. Although I mean size, but diameter is larger, and these are also bigger. You know the the blade grips. <clears throat> so uh, sort of like a reinforced 5.8 kind of an approach. So it keeps it light and keep in mind this is a low head speed uh, helicopter. You know to fly at. Uh, these are the, the arms for the for the fast blade. These are the clamps for the boom. They're pretty cool. So they they clamp with this one, so you can go in an angle. So when you're easy to, they're easy to tighten, you know. And over here in the top, you have the other plate. I don't know that was here. What's that plate? Uh, okay, one of these plates they go here on the top so you have them both perfectly aligned you know parallel to each other when you mount them so it's pretty cool uh, let's see these are the sliding rails um, and the main shaft with the collar and the, the shim washer oh here it is what i was telling you this is the unit see it is um yeah let me let me get it out of the back because this is very interesting so this here can be adjusted see here you can adjust the how hard you want it to be um the the dampening amount so with the the, the second one is a, a counter knot so here on the first one, the one that is next to that, between these two, see, you can adjust how much, how hard you want it by tightening that. Once you know, what, once you have where you want it, then you secure it with the second, the second uh, knot against the first one. And it leaves that. Uh, if you are using um, Rescue, this is a godsend because um it makes it uh, so that the rescue never goes weird cyber or anything like that see it has a soft o-ring inside has a soft o-ring and then this one here has a protrusion that um compresses the o-ring as much as you want this is a counter counter um, knot so you apply pressure here and then it does the same thing with the other one and that's how you adjust your dampening amount, okay? And once you have it where you want it, you just tighten this thing. I tell you, this thing works wonders for the rescue. And um, if you don't have rescue, you, uh, if you're one of those that think that rescue should not uh, work, uh, I mean, nobody should use it. Well, uh, you probably are sponsored or something similar. <laughs> so, because everybody can have a, a brain fart and a little switch will save you from a big bill. Right, this comes with the, with the uh, I forgot what is the name that they have for this. These are super cool um, uh, canopy locks. Let me show you how they work. So it comes with the regular ones, you know, these are the regular ones. And these are the um, supersonic, that's the name. Okay, the supersonic ones, they work like this. They put that on the 
on the canopy. And what you do is you push the canopy inside and then it comes out. And then when you're pushing the canopy, it goes like this, see? And it stays there. So to get it out, you don't have to pull, stop or anything like that. You simply go push the canopy and then come out like that. And by itself, you know, when you align them, they, they lock in place. This is super nice, you know, and uh, goes in these holes. I don't know if you need to make them larger. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I think I might have done it on, on my other ones. Okay, so that's the supersonic um, uh, canopy mounts, okay? You only need the back ones. The front ones are fine, the way they come. So these are the front ones. By the way, I, what I do is I normally um, uh, change the front ones for the x -car magnetic ones. So let me give you right now, I have this cheap $6 um, caliper that I have in my, in my tool bag. It's pretty cool. So anyway, so this is what you do. You measure, let me get this screw off. You measure this distance from here to here. So it says 19.8, so you get uh, 20, 20 millimeter. Uh, no, not here, I'm sorry, from here, from this side. So where, wherever the, the canopy rests to the other place. So it's 22.2, as you can see here. So that would be a 22 millimeter it's only not, not 22 for 2, it's 22 exactly. Yeah, because it's, okay. So 22 uh, millimeter is what you need on the, on the um, magnetic uh, mount the, and the X-card. So don't forget the, the uh, dynamic, dynamic. Diaz and David, dynamic. The dynamic has 22 millimeter spacing, so that's what you need to, if you wanted to know what you need to get for the magnetic uh, X-Guard canopy mounts, it's 22 millimeters, okay? So, okay, next up, let's see what else we have here. We have, ah yeah, these are the ones that go on the carbon plates, okay? They go like that. Uh, the pinion, I think this one, this one is a uh, 13 tooth pinion, I think. Yeah, yeah, 13 tooth pinion. And because uh, uh, you want a small pinion because you're going to be doing a low head speed. Oh, these are the sac sacrificial ones that I was telling you about. So you mount the inside of that. And, uh, and uh, so, so if, 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 if you hit the ground, they actually break. And then you simply get a, a bag of these things and just put them back in place and, and you, there you have your frame spacers. These are from mounting the uh, servos, okay? And um, I think the servos should be the medium, you know, mid-size ones. That's for the tail, the tail um, belt, you know. As you can see, it's nice that it's, they come pre-assembled, so, so you know for sure that you have all the parts, you know. These are the, um, probably the motor uh, bearing block. This are uh, for mounting servos too, you know, has some sort of carbon plates for the servos. And the, so this is probably, yeah, one, two, so this is for two servos. Okay, these are for the, for the um, uh, push rod. The carbon push rod, you have the ends here that you put them with epoxy and just lay them inside. These are threaded, so you adjust the height as, as the, the length, I'm sorry, as you want, and then you glue the thing into the into that um, uh, into the carbon uh, push rod. Okay, right, let me put this back in here for a second. I don't I'm gonna stay a little bit. Very organized. And the front ones. Okay. All right. So let's see what else we have here. Next we have, oh, this is for the top and bottom bearings. They have a connector here between the two. Makes them 
perfectly aligned. So when you slide the, the main shaft, it goes in very easily because they are aligned like that. It's similar to what the um, Spectre has had similar thing too. So pretty cool. I don't know if you have, if you have seen that, but the machining quality of these kits is top notch. I mean, really high quality. When you look at the parts, I mean, the finish of every part, the analyzing, the, the actual quality of these uh, parts is just astounding. It, it's um, it's really something else, you know? And uh, it's, yeah. I always thought that the, that I would never find anything as good as a Saab SAB uh, kit, but this one is are just as good or better, you know? So it's, it's uh, spacing boxes. So this is the, okay, so this is the belt and the tail. Like I said before, everything comes built. So you can always simply unscrew and screw back so you, pretty much you, you don't even need a manual to build them because they're pre-built from from factory. So there it is. That is the uh, tail. Okay, it's a bit like that, and it has these plates to hold it against the the, the uh, against the the boom. Okay. And uh, has well, this one is not are not connected yet. So this is his lighting uh, pitch pitch lighter, and yeah, pretty cool. This is pretty cool stuff. By the way, in case you didn't know that, um, let me see if I have one here. I should have. Let me see. Anyway, so this um, they use uh, on the. Let me show you this. If you look at the the, uh, the inside, there is a, a knot in there. That knot requires a seven millimeter uh, um, uh, wrench, um, and uh, they are the ones that that. Uh, car RC cars, you know that that looks like a cross. So that is the one that you use on this on these things. Okay, it's the same one that you have on the on the RC cars. Because uh, otherwise you go from six to eight, and a regular set. So you will have the seven missing. So you wanna have get them from 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 uh, what's the name of that? Um, uh, Amazon is where I got mine. They were like, I don't know, $8 for two. And these are the stiffeners for the, in between the the motor and the and the main gear uh, bearings, okay? So, and this has slots, of course, for to adjust the distance, okay? For the, uh, for the um, gear mesh. Oh, look at that. It comes with a 14 also. Hmm, interesting. 14 tooth pin and came with both. I don't know if this is normal, you know, but at least on this one, which is a pre-production. Oh, and 15 also. <laughs> yeah, this is not gonna come with the kit. I, I am sure that that's not gonna be the case. All right, so these are the frame um, uh, servo mounts. Okay, so you put them on the frame and then you mount the servos here very nicely. Okay, so that is too obviously. Top and bottom, and uh, um, these are spacers for the for the landing gear. So these are these go these two go on top of the landing struts, okay? And they go on the bottom of the frames. So these to all the landing struts, and we're done. This is all. So these are the canopy grommets, some bolts, and another pinion. This one is what? This one does not have a number. But it's pretty large, so I guess it's all the possible combinations. They probably think that I'm going to be flying at a high speed and they send me all these pinions, but uh, no. 
So that's it. That's the whole kit. The thing has to be light because it's not much to it, you know. So, well, when I build it, I will show it to you. All right. So have fun, guys, and um, be safe. All right. Don't forget to subscribe. Click on the subscribe button and also on the bell so that uh, you get uh, notifications for all the videos. All right. Bye-bye, guys.